Georgia Southern's football program had quickly made a name for itself with two national championships under Coach Eric Russell. A startup program that played hard and carried the pride of the community. There was something special about being an Eagle fan. And in September of 1989, an ESPN national audience would have its first chance to see the prettiest little stadium in America and witness a dynasty taking shape. The anticipation of a game under the lights at Paulson Stadium swirled for weeks in town. As the big night drew closer, a hurricane grew in the Atlantic. Despite the torrential rains and winds, the game went on. And the night of the Hugo Bowl is forever a part of Georgia's Southern history. That was, a, that was a long week. I guess you could uh, uh, say it best as it was a week-long football game. We were all really excited when we found out that we were going to uh, have a nationally televised game here at uh, Southern on uh, Thursday night. All of a sudden, uh, we saw a storm brewing out in the Atlantic. We contacted the uh, National Hurricane Center down in Coral Gables, Florida, explained our predicament to them, and, and I was talking to Dr. Sheets. He sounded concerned, but not overly concerned. And so he was good enough to give me a private telephone number into what they call the war room, where uh, the forecasters, the information from the uh, planes that fly into the hurricane. If you were here that night and, and you could see the winds and the rain, uh, the rain was actually uh, uh, coming sideways. I mean, it, it wasn't falling straight down. At the end of the third quarter, beginning of the fourth quarter, I got a page to go to the ESPN trailer. One of the forecasters that I'd been talking to told me, Chief, how, how long do you have to go in the game? I said, about 15 minutes. He said, well, that's good. I think you'll make it. We did get the game in, and uh, our fans were great. Our fans, uh, they, they were here in force to start with. It was pretty evident that Middle Tennessee wasn't up to stopping the option that night. Our fans had had enough of uh, uh, seven, eight inches of rain. Uh, so we lost a lot of them toward the end of the game, but uh, we did have a few hearty souls that stayed with us the whole game. Well, for, for years I was the uh, co coordinator of the Georgia Southern Weather Station, sort of the unofficial weather person, and advised the football teams and so forth and so on. And about 11 o'clock in the morning, someone came to my office and said, the president wants you talk to you. They said, come over right now. So I went over there to his office and the athletic directors for Middle Tennessee and Georgia Southern were there. The coaches and President Henry said, should we play this game tonight? And I said, well, there's a hurricane approaching Savannah. And President Henry was very concerned because this was the first televised night game with a national audience and they were going to put up temporary lighting and ESPN people were very concerned about it blowing down. So basically what happened was, I said, well, let's call the Hurricane Center and see what this thing's going to do, and we'll meet back again. So we called the Hurricane Center, and they said the storm is approaching Savannah. It's probably going to be a Category 4. So well, let's call back a little bit later and see what happens. So around 2 o'clock we called, and the guy in the Hurricane Center said, Everybody better get out of Charleston because it's heading that direction. And I said, would it be wise to play this game? He says, I think so. They decided to go ahead and play the game. One interesting sideline was that the coach of Middle Tennessee kept saying, can we get out of town? Can we get out of town if this thing is this close? And we assured him that, that he could. And at that point, I figured that probably Middle Tennessee wasn't going to win that game. They weren't into it. The game was played. The weather station here recorded four inches of rain. The wind maybe gusted up close to 45 or 50 miles an hour. The lights shook a bit. Only one little part of the field had water on it, one small corner. So everything went fine. One of the things those of us who suffered through the, the one o'clock games in Statesboro really would like this uh, night game, but we didn't have any lights. The other thing that we just really wanted was national attention, and that's what ESPN was doing for us. It was combining two of our 
two of our great wants into one evening. <laughs> so while people were being advised to evacuate, I don't know what they were doing elsewhere, but I know in Statesboro we, <laughs> we were planning a football game. Up to that point, when a hurricane came, you just wrote it out. That's what plans you made. I guess the only thing that was making this a little different from our normal hurricane plans is that we actually intended to spend it outdoors. On this occasion, there was so much rain. The wind, it was not just gusts of wind. It was just sustained, long, blowing wind and, and with you know gusts coming on top of that. And you know, there was a real sense that you were you were earning <laughs> you were earning your stripes as a fan by being out. And, and on the one hand it was suffering through it, but on the other hand it was just it was just so much fun. The thing I remember about writing that column is that I wrote the headline first. And a lot of times when I would write a column, I really didn't know uh, where I was going with it. I would just kind of start something. And then when it was over, I'd stand back and take a look at it and, and then write a headline for it. But this time I knew what I was going to – I knew the headline before I knew the column. And uh, so I was – in you know, in my head I was calling it the Hurricane Bowl originally. And uh, by the time I finished the column, I actually – the words Hugo Bowl fit better uh, in the place that I put it, so that's where it came from. Well, when Georgia Southern first hired Irk Russell, I mean, the whole thing became a spectacular event, from the Kmart football at the first press conference. What great stories. So, with portable light towers being erected at Paulson Stadium, and ESPN set to televise the game, what more fitting drama than a major hurricane bearing down on the Georgia-South Carolina coast? I just knew it was going to be a historic evening, and so I insisted that the kids go with me, and they looked at me like I'm crazy. You know, normally you tell your children to get out of the rain, and here Dad is dragging them off. Often it's raining buckets. The football game was incredible. We stood up in the stands like drowned rats. Everybody was wet and delirious because Georgia Southern had a great win that evening. So it was just one of those magic moments at Georgia Southern that we were there to share. And everyone that I've spoken with at the game and afterwards, just, it was a memory. And Georgia Southern football has made a lot of wonderful memories. You really want to do a game where, in a place where it's the only show in town. And at that time, that division of football just wasn't getting much television exposure. So the Thursday night games became a really big deal in town, really big deal. And so that was what was really fun about it to begin with. Who knew about the hurricane, you know? And I thought, well, certainly if there's a hurricane, they're going to cancel the game. The Georgia Southern game was on national television, and at that time, Georgia Southern didn't get a whole lot of national television exposure. They went on with the game. It rained as hard as I've ever seen it rain. That's the, the one memory of the, of the broadcast itself that I have is I couldn't see the field. Now, I have a poster of the game which looks like a Surratt painting. That's what it looks like in the painting, and it was a photograph. Well, first of all, the Higo Bowl, I remember that night. You know, I couldn't believe that we were going to play the game to begin with. You know, then it was all over, and we won the game, and everything was everybody happy, and we're still talking about it. And so the prints came back. And, uh, you know, they were just four by six prints. You could see the rain and everything, but it just wasn't that impressive. And so. Susie Hansen, who was Sports Information Secretary, said, you know, I want to get a, a large picture of that. It might have never been seen if Susie Hansen hadn't have said I, she wanted a bigger one. When I would look back, I think how many pictures we took that night. We probably 125, 150 shots. And there's a, just a couple that, that just come to mind when they, that, are, that really just tell the story of what it was. When, when the Hugo Bowl print came out, when you, look at, when you look at it, there's really, you can almost count how many people are left. I did shoot that in the fourth quarter. But um, you, there's maybe like 200 people in there. Uh, Hugo Bowl, I'm not sure what we did different except, like I said, I brought a canoe on the equipment truck. Uh, hopefully the cheerleaders had fun using it to swim around the stadium while it was monsoony. The sidelines, we were ankle plus deep in water because the drain was doing its job, but uh, it gets backed up when you have that kind of rainfall in a short period of time. And I keep saying it was eight inches, over eight inches in about a four hour period. Uh, it was a lot of water in a short period of time, there's no doubt. The only thing that was puddling the center of the field was Pud Mosteller, the umpire that day. 
uh, he was so soaked that uh, he tried to keep our balls dry and it wasn't going to happen. You leave, a, you leave a sideline dry, as soon as it got to the numbers, it was wet. It didn't have a chance. It's raining too hard. When it's all said and done, Irk got a win. It's a game that obviously has made a lot of uh, fame for college football because you don't see them often. You may never see another one played in torrential rainstorm. Well, that day you've uh, bring in three light poles, three light trucks from uh, Musco Light in Columbus, Ohio, and uh, those guys stayed up until 45 miles an hour. Once the wind got higher than that, they were going to pull the lights down. If you pull the lights down, there's no TV game. And remember, this was the second Thursday night ESPN game, and uh, it was a great hit for them. <laughs> It'd be, uh, if you could pull back the attendance, how many people watched that game that night on TV? But, you know, regardless, Hugo was just a great day at the ballpark. It was a win when it was all said and done. An interesting point after the game, as you may know, they presented the Hurricane Center with a game ball that said the Hugo Bowl. And they say it still is at the National Hurricane Center in Miami.